and welcome. On behalf of our pastor, Suffolk Bishop C. Sean Tyson, thank you for joining us here today at Mount Calvary Ministries International for Midday Manor. I'm Minister Daphne Carter Hawkins, and we would like you to invite you to share, hit those share buttons, hit those like buttons, and share with somebody as the pastor is getting ready to come and lay before us the word of God. Our announcements for Tuesday, January the 8th, but January the 3rd, excuse me. This week, January 2nd through the 7th, the Ohio District Council is at Church of Christ at 1200 Brentwell Avenue in Columbus, Ohio. This afternoon's Bible class will be replayed online at our YouTube channel at 7 p.m. Thursday, January the 5th, Saturation Prayer in the Sanctuary will be from 6 to 7 p.m. Friday, January the 6th, Celebrate Recovery will convene here at Calvary from 6 to 7.30. Calvary's fasting schedule. The first day begins Monday, January the 9th, and ends Sunday, January the 29th. Communion will tentatively be Sunday, February the 2nd. And now I count it a great honor and a great pl pleasure to introduce to you our pastor, Suffolk Bishop C. Sean Tyson. Speak to my heart, Holy Spirit. Give me the words that will bring new life. Words on the wings of the morning. The dark clouds will fade away if you speak to my heart. Speak to my heart, Holy Spirit. Give me the words that will bring new life. Words on the wings of the morning. The dark clouds will fade away if you speak to my heart. One thing we want the Lord to do this afternoon is to not only speak that our ears, our natural ears may hear, but speak that our spirit man may hear and that we may grow thereby. We don't want to remain stunted in our growth to what we did on last year, but we want to grow in him. We want to grow in every way. So we grab a hold to the word of God the word of God that shall be spoken, and even the word of God that has been spoken in your lives. And we want to tell the Lord again, I want you to sing it with me. Speak to my heart, Holy Spirit. Give me the words that will bring new life. Words on the wings of the morning, the dark clouds will fade away if you speak to my heart. Hallelujah. God is gracious unto us that he has allowed us one more chance, one more opportunity. I get excited when I hear the song that says, one more time, one more time. He allowed us to come together just one more time. And not only coming together in this place, but coming together virtually to hear the word of God. I pray that you have prepared your heart and your mind and that you have a hold to your Bibles or technology in this room and even online, and I pray that you're already leaning on that share button. We want you to tag somebody also. Put someone's name in the comment section because there's a word that's coming forth 
that you need to hear what God is saying unto us as we move into the next that God has for us. Now, without any further ado, I bring to you, to those of you that do know him, and those of you that do not, I bring to you our pastor, Suffolk and Bishop C. Sean Tyson. All the way. And you carry my burdens every day. Oh, and you such a wonderful Savior. I've never known you to fail me. You brought me all the way. Oh, Jesus, you brought me all the way. And you carry my burdens every day. Oh, and you're such a wonderful Savior. I've never known you to fail me. You brought me all the way. Oh, Jesus, you brought me all the way. And you carry my burdens every day. And you such a wonderful Savior. I've never known you to fail me. You brought me all the way. Come on, put your hands together in this room. And those of you on streaming, give God the glory. Open up your mouth and give God the glory. In this room and even on streaming, Father, we thank you. Father, we magnify you. God, we give you the glory and we give you the honor. There is none like you. You brought us all the way and we give you the praise. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. It was God that brought us through 2022 and has blessed us to be here one more time in a new year, new possibilities, new dreams, new visions, and praising God for another opportunity to be in the house of the Lord and to greet you here and those that are watching in the glorious name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, I pray that each and every one of you had a blessed holiday season, a blessed Christmas, a happy new year. And now we're moving into position for what God has in store for us in 2023. The Lord blessed us with a tremendous, dynamic, spiritual New Year's Eve service met us here in a special way I enjoyed that service enjoyed the fellowship enjoyed the word of the Lord from Pastor Barnes and was grateful that God favored us to have our brothers and sisters from New Beginnings Church from Innovation Life from St. John's in Meadsville Pennsylvania along with us the Calvary family here in what was just a beautiful fellowship and worship service. I believe that we can do more together and that God puts a special favor upon us when we unite ourselves in one place and with one accord. So if you haven't had an opportunity to be blessed by that service, you still have a chance to view that service at Mount Calvary Pentecostal Church Facebook Live, that service is still there for you to view and be blessed by. And I pray that you will take a moment to hear and receive that great word the Lord gave us to launch on New Year's Eve. We're continuing today to send our love and our prayers to one of our mothers in Zion, Dr. Joyce Pfeiffer. We're praying for Mother Pfeiffer. We're also praying for Apostle Darren Thomas and our sister church in Columbus that the Lord will bless and comfort and strengthen them and that Dad Pfeiffer has gone from labor to reward. He's now absent from the body and present with the Lord. We praise God for his life and praise God for his legacy and praise God for the assurance that he is now home with the Lord. 
praying today for you, Sister Sheila Collier. And we're going to be celebrating Friday in Indianapolis. The homegoing service of Mother Collier, a faithful member of Christ Church Apostolic, charter member. The Lord blessed her with 95 years. And now she's gone home to be with the Lord, and we will be there eulogizing Mother Collier on this Friday. And we're certainly looking for tremendous representation from the Christ Church family to celebrate her life and to remember her great contribution to the house of God down through the years. We're praying today for the Ellis family. Our former presiding bishop, Bishop Charles Haywood Ellis III, in the passing of his beloved mother, a tremendous woman of God, a spiritual Pentecostal matriarch. Mother Wilma Ellis has gone to be with the Lord in her homegoing services are this Friday and Saturday at Greater Grace Temple in Detroit, Michigan. We're certainly sending our love and our prayers to the Ellis family, to the Greater Grace family, and to all who were so positively impacted and affected by her life. I praise God for Mother Ellis. She shared some things for me, shared some things with me 30 years ago that are coming to pass in our life in this season and in this time. And I just appreciate her for the memory of the just is blessed. We're praying for all of you that view these services who are unable at this time to come and be with us in the physical location, but I want to assure you that out of sight is not out of mind. And even though you can't be here in this building, I want you to know that the prayers of the saints are continuing on your behalf, and we're believing God for your total healing wellness and recovery these services are designed with you in mind to help keep you connected to the church and connected with the saints and to let you know that God has not forgotten about you and I'm praying that this year the Lord will bless you to experience renewal and restoration of your healing your health your wellness, your wholeness, and your strength. I don't want you to give up on your healing, even though you may have been in a struggle uh, for an extended period of time. That one man was there in that condition for 38 years, but one encounter with Jesus. Mm-hmm. One encounter combined with his faith brought an end to that extended period of illness. And what we like to do is share with you the word of God that I pray will increase your faith. For faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I want you to believe every word that God has spoken. It is true. His word is settled forever in heaven. How many here today still believe God is a healer? Amen. I'm a witness to that. The Lord is healing us even now. They were healed as they went. And I feel a healing presence of God here now on today. And that virtue is flowing to you even through this electronic means. The power of God is present to heal you. I want you to activate your faith on today and believe God. Those of you that have upcoming medical procedures, doctor's appointments, we're just believing God for a turnaround for you. I believe that you're going to get radically better. The Lord put that word better in my spirit for 2023. And I'm just looking for you to get better by the day. So I'm just so grateful that you're here with me today. Lift your hands where you are in this room and where you are watching. Father, it is in the glorious, great, mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Pray with me, saints, that we've come here to say thank you 
for all of your goodness, mercy, and loving kindness that you have extended unto us. Thank you for allowing us to see a new day and a new year. Thank you for bringing us, Lord, through another year. You have kept us by the power of God from danger seen and unseen. You have kept our minds and kept us with a mind to serve you, a mind to worship you, a mind to do your will. Now, Lord, we pray that through this word we will be transformed by the renewing of our mind that we might prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Align us with the mind of the Spirit for this divine time of reformation. I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that faith will be activated in the heart, the spirit, and the mind of all that are under the sound of my voice and the influence of the Holy Spirit. We declare according to the word of God that you shall prosper and be in health even as your soul prospereth, may the word of God that is implanted in your heart and in your spirit bring renewal and restoration to every system, every cell, every organ of your body. May it bring peace to your mind. May it bring comfort to your heart. Lift up the heads that are bowed down. Strengthen the feeble knees. And oh God calls us to mount up with wings as eagles. To run and not be weary. To walk by faith and not by sight. Send your strength to mother fight for today in the name of Jesus. Comfort her heart, Lord. Let there be a tangible presence of God in her home. Bless her children and grandchildren. Cause them to walk in the legacy of holiness that has been set before them. In the name of Jesus, Lord, bless the saints everywhere. Not just here in Youngstown, but around the world. Those that are striving to please God, to do your will. Give us a made-up mind. Give us focused faith. I pray in the name of Jesus that we will not be destroyed by the spirit of distraction, but looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. Give us a spirit of endurance. Help us to hold fast to that which we have. Cause us to set our face like a flint toward God's final destination of victory and overcoming for the people of God. Now, Lord, let great revival come to the church in 2023. Revive the spirit of prayer in the hearts of those who the flames of fire have gone dormant because of the cares of this life. Stir their mind once again to serve you with all of their heart, soul, mind, and strength. And Lord, we will serve you forever. We will worship you forever. We will declare that you are God and God alone, that your name is worthy to be praised. It is high and holy and exalted and above every name in heaven, earth, and under the earth. We clap our hands unto the great God, Jesus. Seal this prayer with your favor in Jesus' name. Help me shout amen. Thank God, thank God, thank God. Lord bless you in Jesus' name. I'm so glad to see Sister Kirk back with us. Lord is healing her and touching her body. I want to talk to you today from the subject, what will you do for me? What will you do for me. I want you that are at home to type those words in the chat line, in the comment section. It's a question from the Lord. What will you do for me? At the beginning of each year, there are numerous prophetic declarations concerning what God will do during the calendar year. 
I have no doubt that there are very specific things that the Lord has preordained to come to fruition in 2023. I have no doubt about that. I believe that wholeheartedly because the scripture instructs us in Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and 1 that to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. Having said that, I want to be sure that we do not, in a sense, in a figure of speech, pass the buck to God and place the entire weight of what will or will not happen this year all on God. While we do nothing or not nearly enough of what God is requiring for his will to come to pass. As you study the scriptures, you will notice that very rarely does God operate apart from the cooperation of man or in collaboration with man. There are some things that God does independently. There are some things that God does strictly according to the power of his sovereignty. But from the Garden of Eden forward, God placed Adam and Eve in the most favorable position and in the most wholesome condition. But he also gave man the responsibility to care for, to cultivate, and to have dominion over the earth he had given him stewardship of. God has not changed. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. This year, the Holy Spirit is going to put us in position to win. But we have the responsibility to execute the plan. This year, the key will not so much be inspiration. This year, the key will not so much be revelation. This year, God is operating through the discipline of execution. I want to look at that word execute with you with a little more intensity. The word execute, that one word, if you will, in all capital letters in the comment section, execute. It has these several definitions. Say it out loud with me, class, to carry out fully to put completely into effect, to carry out fully, to put completely into effect. I hear the Spirit of God saying some of you have some things pending, things that you have started, projects, concepts, ideas. The Lord is saying put them completely into effect, as into execute a command. Number two, the word execute define, say it with me out loud, to do what is provided or required by. Say it with me a little more clarity, to execute a decree. Thank you. Number three, the word execute Say it with me aloud, please, to put to death, especially in compliance with a legal sentence. To put to death, especially in compliance with a legal sentence. If you will, please, Elder Gilchrist, for me, Colossians chapter 3 Verses 5 through 10. 
Now, my dear friend, if you have recently come to know the Lord in the pardoning of your sin, Colossians 3, verses 5 through 10, if you are recently born again of the water and of the spirit, I don't want you to be surprised when the flesh lets you know every day you're still human. I wish I had some honest people in this apostolic, sanctified, tongue-talking, straight-walking church. Gonna let you know every day I'm still here. But what did Paul tell the saints in Colossus they should do about this elder? Colossians 3 verses 5 through 10 please. Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth. Fornication, Fornication uncleanness, uncleanness inordinate, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, covetousness, which is idolatry. I want everyone in the class to tell the student next to you, I only want, I only want what, God what God wants me to have. Covetousness is the desire of something that isn't yours. I only want what God wants me to have, and whatever God wants me to have is what is best for me. Can we say amen? amen. Verse number six. For which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. Well, they say now that you can do whatever, say whatever. Go wherever, wear whatever, and it doesn't matter because God is not concerned about the body, that he's only concerned about the soul and the spirit. That's not a new false doctrine. That's been around since the time of the apostles. This was the concept and the doctrine of the Epicureans. But Paul said, wherefore glorify God in your spirit and your body, which are God's. I want everyone to say all of me belongs to God. I want you to put that in the comment section. All of me belongs to God. My spirit, my mind, my body, my members, my will, my desires, my hopes, my dreams. All of me belongs to God. Now, one of the words that the Lord gave us on Sunday, one of the eight words concerning 2023 was that the decision to ignore the voice of God would result in the wrath of God. The Spirit of God is saying, I'm tired of being ignored. Any, any, any more than a parent, God is our Father, and the Scripture describes him as such. Jesus says, when you pray, pray saying these words, Our Father. He is the Father of all creation. And just like a parent calls a son or a daughter, he might call you one time, uh, I can hear the resounding voice of Sister Evelyn Hainsworth Tyson calling me from the kitchen, Sean! And I might act like I didn't hear her the first time because I didn't want to stop playing with my Hot Wheels. Sean! Well, that time I acted like I was deaf and that I needed my hands laid it on me to unstop my deaf ear. The third time, she didn't call me Cleophis or Shaw. Boy, you better get in here. Some of you had some parents like that, grandparents like that. I want you to know that God is tired of being ignored. He's been calling with loving kindness. He's been calling with mercy. He's been calling with grace. But I want you to know that in 2023, God is calling with urgency now. For which things sake the wrath of God cometh upon the children of disobedience. Let me hear the class shout radical obedience. Read on, elder. Live 
Remember when the saints used to sing that song that said, the way I used to walk, I don't walk no more. They said, the way I used to talk, I don't talk no more. There's been a great change in me. I still believe that when God comes in your life, it changes your whole life. Your amen was too weak. It changes the way you think. It changes the way you speak. It changes the way you interact with your husband or your wife. It changes the way you discipline your children. It changes the way you interact with the other employees on your job. It changes your attitude. It changes your disposition. It changes your heart. It changes your priorities. It changes your desires. There's been a great change in me, and I thank God that if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away, all things are become new. Not just a new year, but a new me. Help me say thank God for a new me. Sometimes you can get so old, so stuck in a certain way, so trapped in a certain pattern, so accustomed to doing the same thing the same way you get it in your mind. I cannot change. The devil is a lie. Somebody's right and somebody's wrong. I'm going to take my chances with God every time. I may have been doing something a certain way for 50 years, but if God says cast your net on the right side, I've got to do it God's way. The Lord told me to tell you your blessing is in doing it God's way. Lift your hands and shout hallelujah. I hear the Holy Ghost saying I want to play, I want to replace old habits with new blessings. Read on, Elder. I feel anointing here. But now, but now, all these, whoa, wait a minute now, wait a minute, wait a minute, anger, 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 we got to pray and fast and humble ourselves and allow the spirit of meekness to come into us, upon us, over us, under us, so that we don't be so angry. But now ye also put off all of the anger. The scripture said, be angry and sin not. Now when you get angry, and we all do sometime, we have to know uh, that the scripture said, don't let the sun go down. There are some things that we allow to, car to, to carry over for too long. And, and the next thing you know, now you have a total division, a total rift, a total separation between one because we fail to activate the two most powerful words in the universe I'm sorry please don't leave the telecast because I said I'm sorry some of you said I think I'm going to watch some other preacher because I want to be angry a little while longer this year we want to be better and not bitter can we say amen to that but now ye also put off all these anger. What else, man of God? Wrath, Wrath malice, malice blasphemy, blasphemy filthy communication out of your mouth. Sometimes we only think of filthy communication as cussing. But filthy communication is anything you say negative about yourself that God has not said. Yeah. Filthy communication is a lack of self-confidence. Yeah. It is a lack of self-esteem. It is a lack of belief that you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Elder, some of our viewers don't know what blasphemy is. Can you take about 30, 45, 60 seconds and explain blasphemy to the viewer? Blasphemy is to deny the veracity of God. Yes. I want everybody to tell the student nearest you, no matter what it looks like, God is in control, and this is your year to be blessed. Clap your hands here and everywhere, and put in that comment section, God is in control. Read on, Elder. Lie not one to another. 
Seeing that he had put off the old man with his deeds, when the Spirit of God comes, he doesn't just give you new life. He gives you new lifestyle. Seeing that he had put off the old man with his deeds. This new year, the Lord wants you to go to the refrigerator and pour out all your butt light. And when you pour in your butt light down the drain, I want you to say, hallelujah, Jesus is the light of the world. No more butt light. We got more drinking disciples now. We want to get drunk on the wine of the spirit. And we say, praise the Lord. Put off his old deeds. Verse number 10, elder. And put on the new man. Thank you so much. We're dealing with the word execute. This is a year of execution. The emphasis is not on inspiration. It will be there. The emphasis is not so much on revelation. That will be there. The emphasis is on execution. The word execution defined, say it out loud with me, class, here and at home. To make or produce something, make or produce something. such as a work of art. Especially by carrying out a design. How many understand that God doesn't do anything randomly? Everything God does is by divine design. And because we are created in the image and the likeness of God and we're moving in alignment with divine execution, everything this year we want to do by divine design number five to execute say it with me to perform what is required to give validity to to perform what is required to give validity to to execute a deed in other words it won't be enough to just say it you have to do what you say. Execute number six. I like this one. This is uh, germane to me as a musician. Say it out loud. To play. To execute a piece of music. This is what made the Mount Calvary Pentecostal Church concert choir. One of the greatest church choirs in the history of gospel music. Because of the disciplined teachings of Arnold Wagner who required execution of a song with it must be perfect do it again let's go back to the top that uh, uh, mother that's nine o'clock let's do it again ten o'clock let's do it again ten thirty work night Let's do it again. Well, that's how that choir became one of the greatest in the world and became world renowned because of its ability to execute all different styles of music. To execute, number seven. Say this out loud with me. To perform properly or skillfully the fundamentals of a sport or of a particular play. To perform properly or skillfully the fundamentals. Probably in February I'm going to teach a series on the apostolic doctrine. Because too many saints are not able to articulate the fundamentals of our faith. To perform properly or skillfully the fundamentals of a sport or of a particular pray, play. Well, as you know, we grew up in Indiana, left Youngstown at the age of five in 1971 and 
That was the same year that the legendary Bobby Knight became the coach of the Indiana Hoosiers. Bob Knight was the coach at Army before he became the coach of the Indiana Hoosiers and Mike Krzyzewski, uh, the legendary coach of the Duke Blue Devils, was his assistant coach at Army. In 1975, IU was undefeated in 75. Their leading scorer, a uh, young man by the name of Scott May, he broke his arm in the next to the last game. They were playing Purdue before the NCAA tournament. Scott May broke his arm. That 75 team, Coach Knight said, was more talented than the 76 team. Well, the 75 team, they lost in the regional finals uh, to Kentucky. That's why I hate Kentucky to this day. <laughs> don't blue, I don't want to hear nothing about no bluegrass. Every time I go to preach in Kentucky, them Kentucky brothers wearing them Kentucky shirts drives me crazy. They lost to Kentucky, Elder. That was in 75, but in 76, Coach Knight said, my 76 team was not as talented as the 75 team, but they executed better. You see, it, in sports, it doesn't matter how great your coach is. Vince Lombardi could be your football coach. John Wooden could be your basketball coach. Joe Torres or Tommy Lasorda could be your baseball coach. But in athletics, they have a saying in Deacon Bowling can attest to this, the players play the game. I want everybody to look at the student nearest you and tell them the players play the game. I want those of you that are at home to type that in the comment section, the players play the game. I want everyone to say out loud, I have what it takes to win. Say, I can be effective. Say, I can be efficient. Say, I am relevant. Say, I have what it takes to be successful. But, 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 you will have to do more than just quote scriptures. You will have to do more than just make decrees and declarations. You're going to have to do more. You know I believe in it. But you're going to have to do more than shout, dance, and speak in tongues. This year, we must execute the plan. As I was meditating yesterday over today's Bible study, this is not what I had planned to teach. And I was looking at a lesson which really was a continuation of what I uh, taught on Sunday morning. The Holy Spirit interrupted my train of thought. I'm sitting there at the desk, and the Holy Ghost spoke to me very clearly, audibly. Ask my people, what will they do for me this year? Stun me. Ask my people, what will they do for me this year? Elder Thomas, it put me in the mindset of the famous quote of President John F. Kennedy in his inaugural address in January of 1961 when he said to the country, ask not what your country will do for you. How many of you remember that? Amen. See, that, I, I'm the youngest, I'm the youngest one in the room. <laughs> See, I, I didn't raise my hand because I wasn't born in 1961. I'm the youngest Christian in the room. <laughs> What'd you say? You, well, uh, you almost were. <laughs> First lady said, I wasn't born either. I said, you was born the day after the inauguration. <laughs> I'm not going to bother you with it now. Ask not what your country will do for you. Ask what can I do for my country. I want you to say to you, the student nearest you, ask not what your God will do for you. Ask what can you do for your God.
we have had more word in this church than any church in Pentecost down through the years. And we still have more word in this church than any church I know of in Pentecost. Last, it was a week before uh, the Christmas break when Elder Thomas got up and started teaching. And I, I, I said to Evangelist Brogdon, I said, I, I need to hear more from Elder because he just full of the word. And when he began to, to teach and to speak and articulate the mind of God, it just revived my soul. So the word is all in this church because he is in you. Christ in us, the hope of glory. I don't know of any other church in Youngstown. I don't know of any other church anywhere that has the in-depth teaching that we have here seven days a week. Seven days. Someone is teaching the word of God starting at 5 a.m. every day with the first lady. Then we got Bible class. Then we have life skills class. Then we have Christian education. Then we come back on Sunday morning with another word. On any given day, there are a plethora of ways we can enjoy the scriptures. We can read our Bibles, the hardback copy. I like to hold my Bible in my hand sometime. I like to turn the pages. I like to write my notes in it. I appreciate the convenience of, uh, of this technology, but I have all my father's old Bibles. I like to read his notes and Sometimes I can feel his spirit in me. You do know that an anointed person has a transferal of their virtue to tangible things. We can listen to the Bible on audio. I, I, I turn my Bible on before I go to sleep at night and I just let the scriptures play. We can listen to sermons on podcasts and Bible apps while we're driving in our car, while we're cooking our dinner. Hearing God's word is not a problem for most of us. But do we hear it and walk away from it without not doing what that word says? We're going to close here today while we are in the process of recovering from our holiday hangover. I want to say praise God for those of you that pressed through the holiday hangover and came to Bible class today. I'm looking for the rest of y'all in church on Sunday. You've got about four or five extra days to recover from the honey ham, from the roasted turkey, from the collard greens, with ham hocks, from the macaroni with seven kinds of cheeses, with the sweet potato pie, with the red velvet cake. You've got about four or five more days to recover from the holiday hangover. Now I want to see you in church on Sunday. I've got about half the class today on Hangover Tuesday. So I'm going to give you about four or five days to recuperate from the football games and from the presents that you didn't like that you took back to Target. <laughs> Hearing God's word is normally not a problem. I'm going to close now. We have to decide this month. How will we handle the word of truth? Will we rise to the challenge? Will we do what the word instructs us to do? I feel that the time for excuse making and procrastination is over. In James chapter 1 verses 19 through 27 James makes it clear that there's a huge difference between hearing the word and doing the word. I want you to study that because I'm going to deal with that on Sunday. James chapter 1. And in that passage, he sets up a contrast between worldly living 
and godly living. I see I've got some of my students here in class with us today. Give God a praise for our young people that are in the class with us on today. I guess they must still be on, on their winter break. I love winter break. And I'm glad to see them with us today. How many of you all had a blessed Christmas? Well, I, we had a blessed Christmas, and I have exciting news. I, got a re, I have a praise report. I was praying for this, and they had Jet he, and Desi, they had something in a box. And I said that was nice of them to get us this beautiful gift, and they tore the wrapping paper off of it. I have a, a tradition where I only open one gift a day. That's my way of making Christmas last. I always hated to see Christmas in. So whatever gifts I get, I only open one a day. So if you got me a Christmas gift and I haven't sent you a thank you yet, don't leave the church. <laughs> it's just because I haven't opened it yet. Deacon Matthew was over the house the other day and, and he, he said, what's wrong, Pastor? You didn't, you didn't like the gift I gave you? He said, he said did, I, did I miss did I miss the mind of God? I said, no, son, I just haven't opened it yet. Well, they gave, they gave us the box, and it had, and I tore the paper off the box and opened it up, and in the box there was a sign that said, grandbaby number three is on the way. I cheered like I won the Super Bowl. Because <laughs> I've been praying for Jet 3. I'm not gonna, I, I, and I'm not going to put that pressure on my son to, to name the baby Jet 3. They name the baby whatever they want to name the baby. It's all right with me if it's a boy. It's all right with me if it's a girl. And it's double all right if it's twins. <laughs> and I know my daughter is saying, Dad, the Lord rebuke you. But that, 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 that made my Christmas tremendous. I loved those grandbabies. And I just love children, period. I believe they have a special place in the heart of God. James sets up a contrast in that text between worldly living and godly living. I, and I just want to say this because if I start reading this, I'm going to be 15 for more minutes, and I don't want to be 15 more today. James sets up this contrast. This is imperative for us now, Deacon Foster, because in my lifetime, I've never seen so many spirit-filled people have such an unspiritual mindset. It's disturbing. Because the scripture instructs us to love not the world, nor the things of the world. We've gotten to the place now where you almost to bargain, negotiate, plead, and beg folk to do anything for the Lord. And it's almost a losing battle to ask them to do anything for the church. So you have that remnant, that nucleus, that small group of workers who are carrying the load. But I want to say to the Calvary family, it will not be enough for you just to come to worship this year. You must make a commitment. I'm going to come to worship, but when worship is over, I'm going to go to work. Amen. To build the kingdom, to exalt the name of Jesus to expand the influence of the name of the Lord Jesus, to be that light, to be that witness that men and women can see the works of God in me and glorify our Father which is in heaven. It's not enough to have 30, 40, 50 saints carrying the load of a church with three, four, five hundred members. Amen. I said amen. I sounded just like that, right? Then I said, I said, Amen. 
We need all hands on deck. I want to say our young people did a phenomenal superior job in putting that New Year's Eve service together. Yeah. Phenomenal. The Lord said, let the young people do it. They took the ball and they ran for the touchdown. And from beginning to end, every aspect of that service was blessed to the Lord. And I appreciate our young people for providing for us such a dynamic, spiritual, and anointed New Year's Eve service. It will not be enough to say you're spirit filled. You must be spiritual minded. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Today, you might be watching and you're saying, Pastor Tyson, I desire to know the plans of God for my life. I want to be fully submitted to the will of God for me, for my family, for my ministry, for my business, every area of your life. You're going to see a number on the screen where we would like to pray with you. We believe in prayer in this church. And we know the power of prayer. But when we finish praying, you must go to work. For faith without works is dead. Call the number on the screen. Area code 330-747-4445. We want to pray with you. And God wants to bless you. Before we leave today, we're going to prepare to worship the Lord in giving in this first midday man and Bible study of 2023. And we always attempt to give the Lord a $20 seed offering in the midweek service. And I'm going to ask you to join me in that today. Many of you have been traveling out of state, out of town for the holidays. If you have not worshiped God in tithing, I'm going to invite you to do that on today. And those of you that would like a copy of the 23 declarations that we made in the New Year's Eve service, I'm going to ask Sister Bowers and Sister Kirk to make that available to you because I believe it's going to bless you. And I want you to keep them before you. Post them on your refrigerator, somewhere visible in your house. And repeat those declarations every day during the month of January. And I'm looking for God to bless you in a special way. I want to say a couple of them. I want everyone to say with me, I will thrive in 2023. Say, I believe the future will be better than the past. I want you to say, my choices now will leave a positive outcome for generations to come. Say, I have strength and longevity. Because the joy of the Lord is my strength. Say in challenging moments, my response will determine my outcome. Say whatever happens, I will be okay. Shout hallelujah. That's just a few. There are 23 of them. I want you to have them. I want you to post them where you can see them and say them. If you're in need of a contribution envelope, just lift your hand at this time, and we'll be happy to serve you. The ways to give are on the screen. Many of us are giving electronically now, and I'd like for you to take that opportunity. I'm going to give the Lord a raise and raise my midweek offering to $23 in the name of Jesus, Mount Calvary. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. We're looking forward to a blessed council this week. The Ohio District Council is in session in Columbus, Ohio at the Church of Christ. We're suffering in Bishop Harold Rayford 
He is the host pastor, and I'm sure that our diocesan, Bishop James Gators, and our chairman, Dr. D.W. Cummings, would be happy to see you worshiping and participating, fellowshipping with the saints at the great Ohio District Council this week convening in Columbus, Ohio. For those of us who are unable to travel to Columbus, we're able to share and participate in the council online at the Ohio District Council Pentecostal Assemblies of the World Facebook page. So tonight, if you have already been in Bible study today, go over about 7.45 or 8 o'clock and enjoy the council tonight at the Ohio District Council Facebook Live page, Pentecostal Assemblies of the World. We'll look forward to seeing you in prayer on tomorrow with the First Lady at 5 a.m. We want to welcome you to enjoy the life skills class on tomorrow evening. The information for that is on this page, Mount Calvary Pentecostal Church Facebook Live. Come and be with us in prayer on Thursday evening from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. And then if you haven't joined us in an in-person service, since we have reopened, I want to welcome you to come and be with us on Sunday morning at 10 a.m. right here at Mount Calvary, 1812 Oak Hill Avenue in the city of God in Youngstown, Ohio. We'll be here. God is already here. And I have a word from the Lord for you. Until then, I want you to stay safe, stay calm, and stay supernatural. We'll see you next time.